it's always a delight to have you join me on the program Flipside. My name is Daisy Vice. I'm your host on today's edition. Well, there's something that has been on for quite some time now and it seems to be gaining grounds and we have more people getting into it and I'm talking about cyber crime. Now, it seems like its own business with its own um, staff and people are just buying into the idea. Have you looked around your neighborhood and found that, that most of the beautiful houses around there are built by Yao boys or Yao plus guys? And have you received SMS on your phone maybe telling you to send your BVN or that you've been credited to claim the money you got, you need to pay certain sum and information like that. Now, this is all part of the cybercrime issues and it's on the rise daily. So today on Flipside, we're going to be talking about cybercrime. Right here is Dr. Kingsley Okoha. He was my lecturer in school. Wow. Yes, when I was in 100 level, he taught me introduction to computer. I don't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> so he taught me introduction to computer science and um, presently he's an associate professor, computer science department, University of Benin. Okay, so it's good to have you on the show for the Thank first time. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, and that other guy there is my friend. So mm -hmm. he was not my lecturer. So <laughs> he's my friend and he's an ICT expert. I'm talking mm -hmm. about Edusa Omoro, where he's yes. been here before to talk about youth-related youth yes. issues and all of those. So it's good to have you Thank in you. your real field. Thank so you. let's talk about this old cybercrime issue. When we talk about cybercrime, some people don't even know what exactly we're talking about. Maybe they just mm -hmm. think about um, Yao. It yeah. means Yao for some people. Yes. It might mean something else for some people. So I'm going to start with you, Dr. Kingsley. Um, when we talk about cybercrime, what are we talking about in general? Okay. Good day, viewers at home. I think uh, when you are talking about cybercrime, technically you are referring to any form of online criminal activities or any form of criminal activity that is carried out with the aid of computer. Yeah. The computer might be the tool that is used or the computer might be the target at exactly. the end of the day. And that qualifies it as cyber crime. Okay, all right now, um, Obaigbe, or um, Morobe, which one should I call you now? Edusa or <laughs> Any Morobe? Any of the two, okay. <laughs> okay, so I'll just call you Edusa. I think um, it's easier for me to call okay. Edusa. How do I protect myself from being a victim of internet crime? What are some things I should know and or do to protect myself? Well, um, there are a lot of ways you could protect yourself against such cyber crimes. But um, the thing is, is when you own um, a computer or a phone, because most people still use, employ the use of a phone to carry out this nefarious act. And um, like as he has said, um, the computer may be the target or it's be, it can also be the tool. When you get a system, there are some basic things you are supposed to have. First and foremost is the operating system that it comes with it in some cases. Afterwards, you are supposed to have um, an antivirus for it. Some um, names, some brands will, bring, will give you a trial version for 30 days, which they expect you to get a complete one after that 30 days. But in this part of the country, some people prefer to use that one for the 30 days and after which you are okay. Uninstall. So and that is, or you say, ah, please look for a cracked <laughs> version for me, which is actually not that okay. Uh, because once you go online, they're going to detect that you're not using a good one and then it's disabled. Uh, and the more you just linger on that and that is it. But the thing is this, if you have a good antivirus, and another thing is this, antivirus and internet securities are two different things. An antivirus is okay. But when you're someone who surfs the internet online, you should get an internet security. Each of the software's brands have both the antivirus and the internet security. The internet security is more robust compared to the antivirus. So if you're going to be surfing, you want to protect yourself against all these crimes, you have to use an internet security for your systems and for your mobile phones. Then there are some of the platforms you see on social media that, um, that is usually common for some people. You say, um, I clicked on this link and it took me to this place to know how many, to know, um, some people say, um, how many times would you have married in the future, some of those funny yeah. stuff. And then the, when you click it, it's going to tell you, allow it to go through or have access to your profile. And once you click yes, they already have a mirror image of everything you have there. Wow. 
world. Yes, which they could use against you. You won't even know. And then you are joy, you're, you're, you're relaxed and say, ah, oh, I checked. And some of them will tell you for you to get the result of what you're checking for. You, they must have, have access to your Facebook so they could put it on your wall. Once you accept that, you're giving them access. Yes, so by so doing, you hear someone says, I'm using my Facebook and I've been hacked. Someone has logged me out of my Facebook. I can't log in with my password. You actually had in initiated it before. Then subsequently, there are some persons, maybe you have a mobile phone and you sell it without um, flashing or erasing everything in it. Once that device is logged in before, someone else who has that device from you can log into your phones your, social, your social media. medias and do whatever he or she wants to do without you knowing. Some of them can even log you out. That's where the issue of identity theft comes in. And then he's maybe asking for money from your contacts and they're thinking it's, it's only a few that will call and say, are you, what do you need money for? And you're like, ah, no, I didn't ask you for money at all. So there are diverse ways you could protect against, but the first one is getting antivirus that would help you cut down this. Some of them comes with a secured sites, a secured internet browser mm -hmm. to browse. Once you go with that browser to browse, you are very free okay. from all that. No one can do a remote um, um, webcam and all that for your location. Okay. It's secured. In fact, this particular question I started with, I will still end the show okay. with it for those who missed this part of it because this is like the most important part mm -hmm. of the program. I just had to start with that for those who maybe are working and they might have to go do something in the middle of the show so they don't miss that part. So many things to do. Okay, now, he mentioned identity theft. I've noticed that I've witnessed situations like this happen on Facebook especially. I've heard of pastors who's had uh, maybe an account, and then there's someone who also has that account, or even a celebrity. You could just go type in, let's say, Messi Johnson. You're going to see like five Messi Johnsons with her picture, mm -hmm. her family picture, her husband, her kids, and all that. Then you have some even giving promos, send your number, I'll send you card. <laughs> then for the pastors, you have something, come to my church, you get oil for this and all those things. Now, how do I protect myself from identity theft? Because maybe it, it wasn't even, you didn't click on those links now, but somehow you just have people duplicating your pages and all of those. How do I protect myself? Okay, first of all, I think uh, the user is supposed to be in charge in almost all the cases in terms of his own security number one try to use a very strong password exactly uh, somebody may want to use his first name initials of his name date of birth date of marriage it can easily be unscrambled uh -huh. and then used to maybe hack into your account use very strong password i think uh, what uh, some people suggest is that you make a mixture of uppercase letter lowercase letter, mm -hmm. numbers, and special characters. When you mix them together, it goes a long way to help you to secure your account. And when you are using very strong passwords, make sure that they are easy for you to remember. Because if you forget <laughs> any character, you on your own will be treated the same manner exactly. as the person you are trying to protect yourself against. Okay. Then secondly, so many of us from this part of the world, we enjoy using free services. Facebook is free, we log in, we supply all our personal information. WhatsApp is free, we log in. So we divulge a lot of information to so many of these social media sites that we use every day. And again, when we go to cyber cafe or to public computer installation, we try to open too many links with too many entry points on internet browsers. And the moment we log out, somebody can use your browsing history, use it to just as an entry point to go sure. and locate your account. That is very, very dangerous. So like I said at the beginning, security online depends more on the user. So if the user wants to be secure, he will be secure. If you are using an email, for instance, Yahoo on its own is a free email service provider, but they also pay for it. Mm. When you pay for it, every unsolicited mail will be removed from your boss. True. And then sometimes when you get some mail, they look too good to be true, Congratulations, you have won internet, uh, you have won the American Visa Lottery. Congratulations, I'm um, Rose. I just saw your profile. I fell in love with you. Congratulations, Jesus loves you. And you quickly click, click, open it before you know your identity, everything you have inside your email will be removed. 
So those are some of the measures we could use to stay safe online. Okay. And now, talking about public Wi-Fi, like almost every organization right now has um, Wi-Fi um, for themselves, though. Mm -hmm. Like if you come to independent television, we have our own Wi-Fi that we use. We have some secure ones and some that are general. So, but when you want to log in, you need to get a password and then you use it. If I pass through UBTH, it picks that there's yes. a Wi-Fi here, Uniben and some other organizations like sure. that. But how secure is it to use a public Wi-Fi? Is it, is it safe? If I'm smiling. <laughs> okay, this is seriously. <laughs> it's not a good idea at all. <laughs> it's That's not, why we are smiling. But it's it's cheap. not. Eh? It's cheap. Yeah, that's all you think. It's not cheap. When your identity has been stolen, you know it's not cheap. <laughs> it's not cheap. It's like saying, like, it's like a mouse seeing a trap that has cheese and says the cheese is free. Yeah, sweet. Go and eat it. Go and eat it. And the next thing we hear is the sound of, you know. So free wi in the US, they ban free Wi Fi. Well, okay. Even when you're installing an operating system, and when you when you when, when you're logging to a maybe you're connecting your stand to the internet, it's going to bring what we call home group, home home group, and um, public and another one again. What another one? You are advised not to use public. You are advised, whether in a coffee shop, in the airport, don't use the public Wi-Fi, because you, your informations can be gotten through the use of a public Wi-Fi. Okay, so it's you could share documents. Yes, documents can be shared. I can enter into your phone see your messages, your pictures, without you knowing, because you're on the same network as I am. Yes? Wait a minute. I want to ask this one. So, let's just say I work with ITV right now, yes. which I do, Okay. and we have our Wi-Fi here. Every staff kind of has a personal password. Every time I log in to that Wi-Fi, the person who controls the Yes, my, you know I'm going already. I can't answer that <laughs> Continue, man. Okay. The person is in charge of um, our admin. ICC admin here. Can he assess what I'm doing? And um, my How can we answer that? Uh, the system administrator or database administrator, the man who is in charge of creating, assigning email, username, and password. Yeah. If he is somebody who is malevolent, he can also use his knowledge wrongly. Yes. Mm. He has access to your username and password. It is stored in the registry. So even when you are browsing and doing every other thing, at the end of the day, you can run a filtering program to just check everything that you have done. And if he sees some activities like you paying for some goods through Amazon or eBay yes. or through Jumia, ah, or you're accessing your account information online, if it's bad, he could just filter it. And that could be deadly to you. So anything that is public Wi-Fi, if you are doing any account transaction, don't ever use a public Wi-Fi for it. In fact, if you have a good antivirus software in your computer that is always updated, exactly. the moment you log on to a public Wi-Fi, it will flash a message and tell you that this site is, not, is not safe. Yes. Don't use it. Okay. And so you are supposed to be warned. Uh, Thank God internet subscription is so cheap in Nigeria now. Uh, you can subscribe to any of the service provider and do your transaction safely okay now that's a word of wisdom especially when it involves <laughs> money <laughs> talking about money let's talk about internet banking now okay. that seems to be one way people are falling in falling victims of cyber crimes we've okay. talked about hacking identity theft so let's talk about um still on fraud let's talk okay. about mobile banking Everyone seems to have an application right now. Everybody at least. Android has come to make life easy for us. Yes. So cheap to acquire an Android phone and then install the mobile, mobile app. app for your bank. For those who do not even use Android, they just have a code. USSD code. They, okay, USSD code that they use. How safe is internet banking? So that we we'll know if we're going to be queuing across <laughs> the counter. <laughs> so internet said, banking okay. is safe. It is safe if you consider it from the two ends. From the back end, the service provider, that is the banks, they are doing their best to secure every form of transaction from that end. Okay. And then from the front end, from the perspective of the customer, your safety also depends on you. So when you are logging online, you are not supposed to make your password visible. You are doing mobile banking as much as possible. Try to remain secure. I think ladies are very fond of this. They trust easily. 
they can easily call their friend and say, please take this uh, ATM card, go and help me withdraw some money. Mm -hmm. It's risky. Or this is my card. And before you know it, somebody can snap your card front and back and use it to even shop on your behalf. Yes. So mobile banking is safe as long as the person who is doing the transaction tries to remain safe. But after that, it may not be safe. All right. So for people like, I won't tell the world what I do. Okay. For some people, I don't do this on I'm saying now. For some people who put their ATM cards in their wallets and then they are very careless, I, they, won't, they don't have to take the wallet or the ATM card. They just need to snap it and all the information is moved. Okay. It's all right. In some cases, mm. the, when you want to do an online transaction, they require what we call a token or a one-time password. OTP, yes. okay, okay. But the thing is this, there are some websites that would, won't require that from you. Mm. So they could actually go and shop using it. Then another thing is this, is some it. of your mobile app, don't set it to remember my password. Yes. Because once you do that, like Oga has said, you can easily, your friend can even easily pick up your phone and go there and transfer money. Because the app is open to you. Because you want, you want to be lazy. You don't want to be typing your password. Man, it's really, it's really sweet to be laid back and mm -hmm. just, everything is just easy. Okay, we're talking about cybercrime and there's still so much to talk on this. But we'll go on a break quickly. And for those who have missed the beginning of the show, you're still in love, we're not done. And you can get a recap, a replay of this edition on Go TV Channel 107. And Star Times Channel 130 tomorrow morning at 4 a.m. Exactly. Then you can also wait, maybe from tomorrow, you go on YouTube and watch the full edition, everything, and keep watching over and over again until all the information sticks to your head. Yes. And then you begin to learn how to protect yourself. And not just learn, you begin to apply it to yourself. I have Dr. Kingsley Okoa. I got it. Okoha. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okoha in the studio. I'm trying to get the Igbo accents so that it sounds like that, but the more I try, it seems like I keep failing. Okay, he was my lecturer. Those who did not hear before here now, he was my lecturer in the event, 100 level. He taught me introduction to computer science. And then I have a friend here, Edo Salmo, where he's an ICT expert. And together we're talking about cybercrime. They seem to be making me more scared than secure right now. But it's okay. I know before they leave, I'll be very sure of myself. Yes. Okay, so a personal question to both of you. So I think I'll start with you, Endosa. What would you say is the most um, dangerous internet activity right now? Social media. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. What about you? I could add online gambling. Okay. Then maybe child pornography. Yeah, add that, that one. to it. That one is Dating so bad. Sites. Yeah, just yeah. add those two to okay. it. Dating sites. Yes. Do people really look for partners online? Yeah, <laughs> some are even scammed <laughs> online mm. through dating sites. Okay, that's sites. true. Yeah. Most of those young people self is all this boyfriend girlfriend stuff. Somebody can use people. your picture exactly and pretend to be you. Meanwhile, it's a male and use it to it's be collecting money from money. me. If I'm looking for a lover online, mm. it's like that. It's like my picture. Yes, yes. Then and I'll say, from? from your Facebook. It could have gone to your Facebook to just copy it and put it there. Then I say, send me money for flight. I'll come and visit. This is cool I'll to see visit. you in Abuja tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Just give me flight money. And you transfer. <laughs> oh my God. Then, because okay. of NLC strike, he couldn't get uh, the money out. <laughs> <laughs> so you send more and keep sending. Okay. Well, um, is. E crime really as big as people are making it sound because we have about the statistics that I got was about 76 fraudulent million fraudulent messages are being sent daily in the world right now. But some other people of the school have told that terrorism is a bigger challenge than e crime and uh, rape and sexual related issues for women are even bigger than e-crime but well, some people say no e-crime we don't understand the depth of it so mm. is it as big as people are making it sound really it is yes i think when you look at the benefits of using a computer number one speed exactly number two accuracy 
and then number three, reliability. You use, this, you use it legitimately to help you solve problems well. Efficient. Then when you use it for nefarious activities, these three advantages will come into play. They will help you to even Advance. attract more <laughs> victims, much more than when you are doing it the conventional way. Mm -hmm. Just take, for example, somebody who works in a bank that has about 100 million customers. He just writes a software. Just every week, collect one one naira from their account. Nobody will notice. Mm. In one month, he has made so much money, yes. much more than the president of this country. In two months, he may get greedy, let it be 10, 10 naira, nobody will notice. That is to tell you the depth. Because of that speed and accuracy, you are able to reach out, do whatever you want to do without being caught. Then most of the crimes that you mentioned, rape, gambling, and some others that you mentioned, funny enough, they are all coming into computer crime now. Because you can actually use the computer to carry out those crimes. Exactly. Use it to stalk your victim, use it to deceive them, use it to lure them to your place and do whatever you want to do. I think it is a very big, it has assumed a very big dimension, much more than you can even imagine. Okay. I, I, what you said made me remember uh, of a case uh, of um, extortion. I don't know how the guy was able to hack into her phone and got some nude pictures that she took to send to her boyfriend, mm -hmm. which is why we don't even encourage sexting at all in this age and stage. And then he kept collecting money from her so that he doesn't Make it public. Public, uh, put the picture online. But after a long while, she was um, from the Middle East, so this Asian that okay. are very careful. She found out that the pictures were eventually sold to mm. a pawn site. Oh, that bought it. So while she was, since she doesn't frequent the pawn site, she didn't she know, know that the pictures were there. Ouch. She was still paying. The guy was making double dough from both ends. That's bad. But Shah um, trust the um, Saudi Arabia government. They went into the matter. And um, so far, so good. I've not heard the end of it. But I think they would fish him out and things would be done. OK, now. Um, between is, is is using an iPhone gonna protect me like maybe seventy percent because I know it's even hard to send documents or files to an iPhone. So if I use an iPhone, am I like seventy percent secure? You are you are more secure from the side of the people who design the iPhone. They've given you enough security. Your own activity we account for the remainder of the security. So if they gave you 70% security, your activity will now account for the balance 30, which may be dangerous. OK. All right, now, um, how can I surf the net anonymously without being um, detected that it's me? Maybe I want to go to some, get some information, and I don't want anyone to know I ever went to those sites. Is it possible? Can I achieve that? It's, it is. Okay, please, how do I go about that? Because I want to There are know. software services called VPN, or Virtual Private Network. Yes. Okay. You can subscribe to. Okay. And then even I know some antivirus, too, that yes. offer powerful internet security. When you pay, mm. they allow you to also solve the net anonymously oh. by keeping your browsing history, the cookies, everything away from your site. So mm. nobody even knows that you are even okay. chatting or talking from that IP address. Okay. So there are some that are free. But I think I'll prefer the ones that you pay for. Okay, now. Okay. If you use the ones, if let's say you don't use um, antivirus per se, another thing you could do is in all of the browsers, when you are done browsing, you can clear up your history. Okay. Yeah. The shortcut is, I think, is a shift control and delete to bring out your browsing histories, your saved password, and you untick them and delete. No one will be able to go as at that point to check, check what you've point. done. Yeah. Now, even on your browser setting, you can even uncheck browsing history, yes. so it doesn't even keep it for you. Oh, okay. And then there's another service there where you can actually select browse incognito. Exactly. Yes. Once you do that, it puts you in anonymous mode. Yes. Oh, I like that one. Oh, that's so easy. <laughs> that's a bit cheap if you don't want to use. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, I want to ask this one question too. Um, okay. When we make video calls with our phones, some people use their laptops, so they use the webcam to make video calls. The person you're video chatting with, if he's a computer whiz kid, can he, from that video, 
hack into your phone. Is that possible? It is? Yeah. Webcam hacking is very common. Mm. Funny enough, <laughs> when they hack through your webcam, they will also be able to know so much of the activities that goes on around you. Especially if that webcam is switched on while you yes. are working in the house. They can monitor your house, your activities, and every other thing that takes place. And if, again, the webcam is now interfaced to a CCTV, uh -huh. they can also use that one to check yeah, everything that goes on around in every part of your house. So it's uh -huh. very, very deadly. Hmm. <laughs> okay, now, <laughs> now since talking about cybercrime, there's a slander and defamation of character. I think the people who experience this the most are entertainers, celebrities, and people who are on television, who are known, popular people, politicians. In fact, popular people, they face this a lot. Someone could just wake up one money and create a blog that is not known, upload information, stories that are not true. If it's a public, pop, um, popular blog like maybe Linda KJ or any of those, you could find someone to hold. Yes. But some of these blogs, you don't even know who owns them. You don't know where they come off from. And then there's, there's stories about you that are untrue, that cannot be substantiated with pictures and information. They just shall make your reputation rubbish. They slander yes. you and they defame you. Can I sue? How do I, first of all, even catch a person like that? <laughs> That is not known and then is it when I catch can I can I sue I don't um, the thing is this you can sue only when you find the person and the evidence and other things there but I don't really know if there is proper laws for that yet I'm not so sure but I do know that um, government control not entire not en entirely control now and regulating the um, who I see this in terms of in, in the cyberspace it should not be more, or it should not be enough, Shad. at least you should have some restrictions but not proper. There are times where you can track someone's IP address to get a person and there are also applications that could block your IP address from being tracked. Yes. Okay. The thing is, if there are proper regulations as to who puts on a blog, creates a blog and you could trace, like Linda and Kitchen, like you said, he's someone who yeah, you she has know a face to have yeah. yeah, so but there are some other ones who don't have. It's very difficult to. to catch it's very them. difficult to because even most of the times mm -hmm. we clamor for the security agencies to be properly um, educated, trained on how to do these things. It will make it easier when they are the ones prosecuting, you know. Mm. Yes, somehow, I think it is it is possible for you to sue, like he said. Mm -hmm if you are able to apprehend the person. But even when you apprehend the person, you also have two dimensions to look at. Number one, you should prove, you will be able to prove that. What you are being, uh, your character that is being defamed, yes, defamed yes. is actually defamed. True. That is, if they call you a thief, you have to a right to prove that you are not a thief. Okay. Then two, you also have another form in terms of getting a copy of that particular blog or site, yes. get the picture and everything, taking this uh, URL and the IP address, keep it as evidence. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to court, if you prove to them that you're actually not a thief, you can actually fix an amount for damages and yes. suit. That is if you get the Information of character. But where we have a problem is that most of this crime you are talking about, they transcend our border. Mm -hmm. The person can be in Rwanda and be posting it. The laws of Nigeria cannot go to Rwanda and catch that person. Mm -hmm. That becomes a big problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this internet word is just his own word. <laughs> and things are hard. Okay, now, there are some um, cybercrime victims, and some of them even go online to share their stories, especially kids. We, uh, like in media, electronic media, let's say a child was raped. We do not put the face of the child for the public to see because yes. we are told the ethics of the judge says you have to protect an underage Stigma person. And all. Now in social media it's not the same. Nobody really cares. In fact they want to see the person self. And then when they do, comments begin to follow and people don't even care. 
bullying, cyberbullying is really at its peak right now. Mm. They call it trolling, and it seemed like a very fun thing to do in Nigeria now. So I said, ah, she, the, the, the girl was trolling, let's say, the band. Someone trolled the band, and then the band clapped back and responded to the trolling. And everybody's, it's news, we're all reading yes. it and all that, but it's not funny. Some people take it so personal, and then they are thinking of suicide or even worse things than that. Mm -hmm. All right, so are there ways we could help cybercrime victims? Even because most times you don't even know these people, they just share their story. Can we really help them? Is there any way you think we can help them? Reach out to them somehow and help them. Let me start with you, Doctor. In the essence, I think the crime has been committed. They are now victim. The next thing to do is to properly give them good orientation. Something happened that gave, uh, made them to give their security away that now made that crime to be perpetrated. So the best you can do is to now educate them constantly educate them so that they don't fall victim the okay. second time. Okay. And then you now tell them how to stay safe online. Then if you are a parent and the victim actually happens to be a child, all you need to do is to now go to your internet browser, whatever browser the person is using, activate what you call parental control. Mm. It's not only DSTV, you can activate it on your browser. So that, and then you also have some software that helps to filter some content. If you put it on the phone and activate it, if the child wants to visit some sites that may not be too good or safe, the software will block him away yes. and he will not be able to go there. And that child can remain as safe Protected. as possible. If I delete my social media accounts, does it automatically wipe out every other um, site I've visited via that account so that they don't ever reach me again? My deleting does not still protect me. Uh, funny enough, when you delete your account or any of your account, you discover that the service provider will put a message there and ask you, do you want to delete this account? You say yes. What reason? You give them the reason. Maybe you are no longer interested. They will put a proviso on that, that this particular page that you have deleted the account is still available <laughs> on their server <laughs> yes, for some true. period of time. So it means after three months, you go back again with your username and password. You recover everything, everything back. Yes, so they were actually demobilized, but not deleted. It's just like you removing everything from my phone. Mm. One way or the other, I have a software I can use to go and get those information that were removed from my phone. I will get everything back. Oh, ouch. <laughs> OK, it's all right. So, um, so that we'll leave here now. We have just four minutes to do okay. this. We're just going to have a quick recap of um, staying safe from cyber crime we have a lot of things that are happening there we have gambling we have child pornography we have fraud we have the formation slander identity theft we have uh, cyber terrorism and several as many crimes as you can think of it's going on on the internet in a low key but it's beginning to increase as the day goes bullying in schools that Schools are now being very careful to protect children. They don't tolerate bullies. All the bullies have gone online Sorry and they've come with their bullying in a high level now. So they just follow you. They talk about the body shame you. They talk about uh, your finances. They even condemn your job Physics. or your lack of it or whatever. They just talk about. They have. There's always something for bullies to talk about. So, but how do we keep ourselves safe from cyber crime? Uh, I started with. Okay, so I'll start with you, Dusa, because I started the show with the doctor. So how do we just a recap so that he would also give ads to it and then we end the show. Mm. Like the doctor said, your passwords should be very, very, very safe. And you don't, there are some applications who tell you when you're putting your password for the first time, weak password, strong password, very strong password. Chance say you can get a very strong password. Then when you have friends or people who tend to be bullied, try and uh, unfollow them or unfriend them or block them so they don't have access to bullying you online. Okay. All right. Again, on my own advice is for you to be scammed, it takes a lot of greed. A lot of <laughs> greed are involved. So if you are not greedy, you will never be scammed. Mm -hmm. Somebody telling you that you won US visa lottery, stop and ask yourself this question. When did I play the lottery? 
So don't just go there and open any site that is just available for opening. And then again, before you post any information online, always ask yourself this question. If this information about myself falls into the wrong hand, will I be happy as a result of the consequence? If the answer is no, then take extra measure to remain secure online. Okay. And personally, I'll just add this one to everything they said. Information, women, we like our money. We don't joke with our money. Our money is our money. Then our man's money is our, our money. money as well. <laughs> so whatever information you're putting online that involves putting your card number, your mm. card pin, and all of those things, you'll be very careful before you start typing them. For those who gamble, those sites will always ask for those information. So if you're using any bank information that has bank details like that look for the bank your mobile bank that does not have money exactly. and put it there and when the money's due coming transfer so fast sharp, that they can't catch it all right i'm daisy by everyone thank you for staying with us don't awesome. worry you can watch a repeat of this broadcast 4 a.m and go to the channel 107 and start times channel 130 and you can get a full edition on youtube from tomorrow so just go on YouTube and type Flipside ITV. You will find our recent videos and not just this edition, as many as you want to watch. So thanks, Dr. Kingsley. Thank you, Edusa. Thank for you so much. Show. So I'm going to say bye-bye. And I'm going to start deleting some things on the phone. <laughs>